Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 uh, Fundamentals video tutorial. DB2 is an RDBMS under IBM flagship. Uh, there are a lot of other RDBMS available in the market like Oracle, Sybase, uh, MySQL uh, to name a few. And uh, uh, DB2 is uh, available in uh, multiple platforms like Linux, Unix, Windows. That's what they call it as LUW. ZYS is the mainframes. i5 OS is the system I uh, series from IBM. And DB2 is also available in multiple editions, ESC, WGSC, Express, ExpressC. So these multiple editions, they serve uh, mostly like uh, in terms of a price point, uh, in terms of a, a choice for the customer uh, from, a, from a price point and also from a feature point. Like say, the if you are going for a, a large enterprise uh, application, large enterprise uh, system, so wherein uh, the, the resources that are going to be consumed are, hu are huge. So you go for uh, the ESC edition, the enterprise server edition that will offer you a kind of licensing. Whereas the workgroup server edition is a limited uh, edition. Like say, uh, it, it supports only up to two processor machine and it will only support up to four GB of RAM. So something like that, uh, you know, uh, the, the feature wise also, there are some restrictions and the, the hardware also, there are some limitations. So those are the differences between the multiple editions and Express C, the community edition, Express community, that is a free one which is available from uh, IBM site, free uh, software. Um, it's for the learning community, it's for the developer community. So anybody who wants to get a hands-on on DB2, they can straight away download to their laptops or desktops. They can install them and try a hands-on and do uh, and, and have, have a good understanding of DB2. And the latest version is version 9.7. This slide talks about typical RDBMS concept. Like RDBMS is a software that is used to store, retrieve, and manage data. Database objects that are typically stored within RDBMS are tables, views, indexes, stored procedures, triggers, UDFs, uh, all your DDLs, DMLs, uh, the ER diagrams, the ER relationships between the tables, uh, the constraints. The, I mean, pretty much every everything is the same. The RDBMS concepts, whatever is there, it's it's uh, uh, applicable to DB2 as well. So all RDBMS concepts apply to DB2 as well, and the structured query language SQL is used to store and retrieve uh, data. Uh, for the agenda for this tutorial, so we look at what an instance is and try to understand what's the instance path, the folder structure, uh, create and create and work with instances, uh, database. And what, what a database is and what's the database path and folder structure for the database and what is system database and local database directories and what is system and database configuration files. DB2 system instance database. So he, this is the slide which is talking about the architectural uh, view of the database, how, how it fits in. So like you have one physical server which is DB server and on which you will install the DB2 software product. So what you get when you install the product is database manager program files. So you just install a set of binaries. Excuse me. You just uh, install a set of binaries and after installing the product, you need to create instances. So if for example here, there are two instances, instance one and instance two. Instance one, if you look at the arrow mark that is also pointing to database manager program file instance 2 is also pointing to the database manager program file which means that they are going to use the same set of binaries they are just runtime entities of the binaries that you installed okay and what they, what do they do they kind of uh, give you a logical group of uh, uh, databases they they kind of tend to group the database so instance 1 is having uh, database 1 and database 2 like instance 2 here is also having database 1 and database 2 like that you can have multiple instances each having comprising a set of databases so what these instance really give is a very good control of sharing of resources between these uh, instances so the underlying physical server is the same right so if, if there are some if there is a 10 GB RAM machine and uh, you know with four processors we are still going to use the same resources, but the the instance one and instance two, it is going to serve two instances. 
and how are you going to manage the memory of these instances is completely configurable uh, and the, uh, for example the number of connections is also configurable like say uh, the instance 1 we allow only uh, 10 maximum connections whereas for instance 2 we can allow 50 it's it's completely doable through the configuration file so what is the configuration file here it is highlighted database manager configuration file and whenever we say the instance and database manager they mean one and the same okay so and so th by this way instance really gives us to group our environments so we can group instance one as a development environment instance two as a production environment we can have instance three also as a SIT environment in the same machine so it's all limited by your uh, hardware and software resources and how you want to manage them right so it is completely flexible this is an important difference between Oracle and DB2 where under one instance only one database is allowed for Oracle whereas in DB2 it is completely configurable flexible system now let's look at uh, the folder structure okay now D program files IBM SQL Lab. so this is where we have I have installed in my machine the the DB2 product so once I install it here this bin this is the directory that we are talking about so this is the one which will have the binary files that the shared binaries that we are talking about okay and how to find out what are all the instances that are there in my system so let's say cmd so let's go get into the command prop and say db2 i list this is the command for listing what are all the instances that are available in the system so currently it shows me two instances one is db2 the other one is my inst so when you do a typical installation of the software product in windows environment you get the option of creating a default instance during the installation time itself so that is what is called as db2 and I have created additionally uh, one more instance my inst okay. now if we want to get sorry if we want to get the configuration file so db2 get dbm cfg okay so it will it is not working because a normal command prompt it will not work here because it says the command line environment is not initialized very clearly so how are we going to do that so always when we are working for db2 we have to get get initialized with our command line environment so for that just running cmd in the through, through the dos command window prompt it's it's not going to work so db2 cmd so this is the window which we should be working on so here i can list pretty much the same thing okay so this shows two instances and by default when when it when i'm initializing this environment automatically attaches to a default instance and what is my default instance db2 get instance this is the command to to get to know my current instance so my current database manager instance is db2 okay now how will i get db2 get dbmcfg so this command will give me the configuration file okay similarly I can do for my instance so whenever this command window is launched it is going to get itself attached to db2 instance which is my default system default right so how am I going to attach myself to the uh, another instance right it's very simple so set db2 instance equals my inst okay now I run the command get instance so now my database manager instance is my inst so here I can say again db2 get dbm cfg so this will list the configuration for uh, the instance 2 right uh, which is my inst now we will not look at all the parameters we will look at some key parameters here okay see here the max connections it is automatic automatic look at at the other instance the max connections is 5 so my 
my instance, right? So for the DB2 instance, which is default instance, I have set the parameters such that only maximum five connections, client connections are allowed, right? Whereas here it is automatic. It can grow as per the, the system usage, right? This is what precisely we are talking about here. So we can have uh, instance one, instance two, with instance one serving only 10 simultaneous connections or five simultaneous connections. Whereas the rest of the RAM and uh, CPU can go for better utilization on system uh, on the instance 2 which is the production instance that's the way we want to configure so it's completely flexible and even not only the connections we can also let's look at one more parameter like say instance memory so currently uh, in both the thing it is set as automatic but it is still highly configurable we can give whatever uh, uh, an uh, uh, estimated value like we can configure of 10 GB of RAM, only 2 GB is to be used for the instance memory uh, for the development and rest of the uh, 6 GB for uh, another instance which is the production and rest of the 2 GB for other OS uh, processes, right? So we can split our uh, hardware uh, resources and we can really have good control over the hardware resources that are consumed by each and every instance. Okay. Now, DB2 database is where you store and retrieve data. So we have not yet created the database. We are still working at the instances. Uh, the next point is DB2 instance is a runtime entity comprising multiple database and their configurations. Uh, and DB2 instance is also referred to as the database manager or DBM. So whenever we say database manager, DBM or instance, they, they mean one and the same. And using DBM CFG, you can allocate system resources as per the load of your environment. Like we discussed, like for development, only the connections, we can limit uh, the max connections itself. Right, so by that way, the the load is going to obviously be uh, lesser on that. Right, so we can we we can get a good control basically. And DB2 system is a complete DB2 environment comprising multiple DB2 instances and databases. And two important configuration files that are uh, uh, to be uh, taken care of is to be noted is DB CFG for each database, the database configuration file, and DBM CFG which is the database manager configuration file for the instance. And we have seen uh, the DBM CFG for the instance and few parameters and how to control. Okay. So even though these instances that we talk about are, uh, you know, like runtime entities and logical entities, we are looking at more in a logical way. These have to be physically stored as a complex uh, folder uh, structure, folder and file structure. Okay. So the instance gets associated with one directory. It is called as the instance home directory in Unix or it is called as the instance profile directory in Windows. In uh, Unix environment, every instance in Unix runs under an Unix user called instance owner. Similarly, uh, uh, in Windows, there is a profile uh, directory. So whenever you create the instance, you need to, when you create the instance, itself, you need to set, okay, you need to tell uh, uh, to the DBM when it is going to create the instance, you need to indicate where the profile path should be, where the where the instance home directory should be. Obviously, a default value is going to get assigned in case of Windows. So the default value is C documents and settings, all users, application data, IBM, DB2, DB2 copy one. This is the default directory under which the instance profile directory will be there. And there is a DB2 INST prof variable, which is also uh, pointing to this path. But in Unix, it is completely different, right? There is an OS user, okay? So his the, the OS user's home directory is going to be used as instance owner's home directory as well, okay? So instance creation. The instance creation in Unix is completely a different process and instance creation in Windows is a different process. The instance creation in Unix, it requires a user at OS level, right? So create user DB2 INST1 and DB2 fence one at OS level and then go to DB2 DAR which is where you have installed the DB2 product then instance directory then DB2 ICRT that's the executable you should be executing so DB2 ICRT hyphen U DB2 fence one DB2 INST one that's the instance name and also the OS username so you are going to create an instance with instance name DB2 INST one which will run under the user DB2 INST one and the home directory of the user is like slash home slash db2 inst1 and once you create the instance you will find an sqllib directory created under slash home slash db2 inst1 sqllib that is the instance home directory in case of unix 
in case of windows we use the command db2 icrt uh, here actually when we uh, looked at in our case uh, we had actually a couple of instances right uh, db2 and my inst so my inst was pretty much created up front by me so that is uh, how the command is db2 icrt my inst is the instance name hyphen p is the profile path that's that's the profile directory where i want e colon my inst Okay, and the instance will be created under folder e colon my inst the variable db2 inst prof is set to e colon my inst and the file e my inst my inst db2 system that will be my dbm cfg you know where these all these configuration parameters are there right the, these comes from e my inst my inst db2 system file and e my inst my inst sql db dir sql db dir is the file which is called as the system database directory okay now let's go to some hands on okay now here we have the instances okay let me show you how to create them okay, first so db2 icrt i'll create some urinst i'll i'll just create some uh, instance db2 icrt urinst so this is how you basically create the instance this is a default thing the instance got created successfully but still if you look at my db2 get instance i'm still pointing to attaching myself to db2 only which was my default instance so i need to again use the command set db2 instance equal to urinst so this is how i attach myself to the newly created instance okay now how how to drop the instance so db2 i drop uh, the instance name u r i n s t okay straightforward and simple okay now where these instances are created and where these instances so that's what so since we did not give here any uh, profile path it would have created in the default uh, instance path right so what what was that so c documents and settings so we'll go there and check for our thing c documents and settings all users uh, application data IBM DB2 DB2 copy one. So here is what. Okay, let's go and create the instance once again. Okay. ICRT your INST, right? Okay. So we got the folder here. So DB2 copy one is the uh, the instance profile uh, directory here, wherein your INST. So this is going to be our instance directory, and DB2 SYSTM so this is the file which is the uh, dbm cfg file and there are a lot of other files also available in 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 the newly created instance okay so we will we'll just drop this for the time being and we will look at the uh, the default one which is already created okay we do i drop your inst So let's go to the directory. See, okay, by dropping, the folder also is gone. So now DB2. This is our default instance. So if you look at here, certain important files that we can look for is DB2 diag log. So this is a file wherein the diagnostic information is logged. So whenever some activities are going on in DB2, you you, you know there are some errors that are uh, need to be uh, you know thrown. Some exceptions occur. Some exceptional conditions occur. So everything is going to be logged in. to the db2 dialog file and this is an important file db2 systm so this is what we were uh, telling like you know uh, okay so this is what we were telling the, the system um, uh, configuration and look at here when i say db2 get instance it's giving me the error because i just dropped the ur inst and my current uh, variable is set to that so i need to change it back so set db2 inst to bring it back to db2 
now say get instance yes and now say get dbm cfg got it okay so this is the folder i'm going to change here okay one two three go back i get error right which means since this this is the system configuration file it's not allowing me to access that i rename it back okay go there got it okay so that is the system configuration file and we have looked at the dialog file the event log file is for the event monitors and everything and there is a folder which is for events this is for the deadlock events and other thing that uh, for the deadlock events uh, capturing so the, that that will be used under this folder and there are a lot of other uh, folders for logging and other thing and one thing is the stmm log so here you can find the self tuning memory that i was talking like you know you group all instances and you pretty much control the memory how much uh, each uh, instances are going to consume or each database is going to consume right those uh, activities will be logged here okay and here is the important file sql db dir okay <coughs> excuse me so sql db dir if we go back to our presentation see the db2 system file is the dbm cfg file and the sql db dir is the file the system database directory file right so this is the one so now let's look at the content of them so db2 list db directory this is the command so this is the system database directory command this is the system database directory it has some three entries okay now let's go and change the little file renaming here and try to execute the same well, it's coming again that is because there is a backup file that is maintained here now you change the other file name also now it says the database directory cannot found on the indicated file system now we need to rename it back we'll rename both okay yep so the the sql db dir file which is inside the instance profile path that is called as a system database directory so here uh, in our system database directory for instance db2 we have three entries which means there are three databases under that instance now let's go look at our other instance so what is this instance db2 get instance this is my instance okay and what is the db2 list db directory so this will tell me what are all the uh, so this this is the system database directory for the my instance and this pretty much has two entries in it which is my test and your test two databases under it okay so we have currently our system set up in such a way that there is db2 one instance which is having three databases and we are having another instance my inst which is having two databases now let's look at now how to look at my inst uh you know wh where where is the instance path like say so in order to see that we can say db2 set hyphen all so this will give us so we can also try that here also db2 set hyphen all so this set of variables will will tell us where the instance profile so the db2 inst prof variable this tells us where the instance profile path is so for my instance it is e colon my inst for db2 instance it is the db2 copy and folder which we were looking at correct okay and uh, and one one more thing is the db2 path variable so if you look at the db2 path variable it will point to d program file ibm ibm sql lib which is where the the db2 software is installed 
because you need only one installation of software and you can create as many instances using the db2 icrt command right okay let's go to the e my ist folder and check for the same files whether the instance file so here we are e colon my inst so that has my inst folder we have a pretty much similar same dialog file the db2 system file which is a configuration file and the sql dbdar file this is the system database directory which tells only two databases are available under this instance okay and this pretty much talks about the db2 instance path and the you know the uh, sql dbdar directory it is highlighting the sql dbdar directory okay. okay let's go and look at look at the contents of uh, this okay so here in the system database directory there are two entries and it gives the database name and the alias name and it gives a local database directory it gives a path basically what is my local database directory these are the three important parameters here to look for okay so similarly for the other instance we have see here the tools db is one database test is one database asdb tools db the local database directory is d colon this is d colon and this is e colon okay now so, so far we now have looked what an instance is and what is the system database directory is uh, initially there won't be any databases at all right when you when you just create an instance you will not have any database at all created right so next step that we need to look for is creating database so what happens is see this command window i have attached myself to instance db2 so when i issue create database command under this uh, uh, you know command window i am going to create a database under that instance right so whereas here my current instance is my inst so if i am going to issue the create database command here i'm going to create a database which is under this instance right the, the logical grouping that we were talking about in the initial slides right so that's how we achieve it okay now now let's do uh, a typical uh, create database the most simplest form of the database command is create database database name okay let us be in one instance let's take the default db2 instance okay uh, and let's try to create a database so db2 create db my sample right pretty much that's all straightforward it's going to take some time so so where it is going to create the database so that is a big question right so let's go back to the presentation so the answer is there is a dbm cfg parameter called dft db path which is like default db path okay this is where this parameter points to the directory or the the, the drive wherein you are going to create the database okay now let's okay let's quickly open another command prompt window so db2 get instance as to db2 db2 get sorry yeah db2 get dbm cfg dft db path see here this is the default database path d colon right so 
when I am going to issue the command like simply db2 create db my sample the database got success completed uh, the database creation got completed successfully so where it is going to create the default path is d drive right okay now let's just exit from here it's an additional window we don't need it okay now look at the directory d colon so in d colon we have db2 one folder inside that you have node 00, zero. So this is where we find the my sample, right? So this is where this is the DB DFT DB path pointing to. So whenever we create some database, it's going to get created here. Okay. Now uh, we can we can look. Okay. Now we see here my sample. We see here ASDB. Okay. So ASDB, yes, ASDB is a database that is existing, okay, and we pretty much don't see. Okay, let's look at Tools DB. Yeah, Tools DB is also available. ASDB is also available. My sample is the one just we got created, right? My sample is just the one we got created. So when I say DB2 list DB directory now. So it will give me four entries: tools db, my sample, test, and asdb, right? So these four are there, and all all of them are created in d colon, right? Except asdb. Asdb is created in e colon. So how we will be able to do that? So that is this command: create db db name on here. We can say e colon, which means that it will create the database on e drive. Just like the my sample we created in tree drive, so let let's just create one more database. So db2 create db db name is say your sample. Okay. U R S A M P L your sample. Here we have to say on e colon. Okay. Now look for here. What happens in e colon? E colon, it has a DB2, same. It has node 00. Look at here, it has created the your sample, right? So this is where my database is. Now, is this my database directory? No, this. This is not my database directory. Now, in order to understand that, we need to okay, still the database is still creating. Okay. So we'll just look at the previous one, like the my sample we created, right? So what what is happened there? Okay, we can just try to analyze that. So DB two node zero zero my sample, right? So it has created some T zero zero T zero zero one. T002 it has created some files here and there are directories like sql001 sql002 sql003 okay so here now we have uh, in when analyzing uh, d db2 node 00 so this is how the folder looks like so for asdb my sample and we have like these kind of sql001 0203 okay now Let's let's do one thing. Let's just drop db2, drop db, my sample. Okay. Look at here. What is the change? My sample got deleted, and there was an SQL003 folder here, right? Which got deleted. So let's look at one more time. We create db my sample. Okay. See before creation. There is ASDB 001, 002. There is an SQL DBDAR. There is Tools DB. Okay, these are the existing uh, structure. We are not disturbing that. I am just creating DB my sample. Okay, look at here. Now what happens? It took two folders. One is my sample, 
another one is SQL003 right now the SQL003 is the actual database folder okay now this is where the actual database resides this is the actual database directory which contains all the internal uh, files this directory or even this directory structure that is getting created we should be never changing it no modifications are allowed manual modifications are allowed no changing of files no copy pasting of files here and there because these are some critical files which are created by the database manager itself for the functioning of a database for the proper functioning of database okay now this is the sql003 folder which got created once we issued the command create db mysql okay now if you look at here this is the sql buffer pool file this has the db conf file the db configuration file that we were mentioning like uh, every database also has a uh, database configuration file right so that is this sql db con and db conf so one is a backup and one is the primary file and there is a recovery history file there is a buffer pool file and this is the sql log directory where all the uh, logging of uh, transactions takes place okay so this is actual the the, the actual database internal you know the the files okay and then what is this other directory that got created my sample so my sample if you look at here the t00 t001 t002 if you look at this so these are called as table spaces okay your database files are different your table space files are different your table space is where you actually store your table data you create your table inside a table space your table is actually living inside this table spaces so when you look at this uh, this is a catalog table space this is a temporary table space this is a, a, a user table space so we will get uh, into all these details uh, in the in the next uh, uh, video tutorial maybe what exactly or what are all the different types of table spaces available and all that different types of table spaces and all that okay so but as of now we can understand when you create the database we get two two folders here so one is the sql003 another one is the my sample with the name of the database which is the table space files okay where the actual data resides okay now now you if you look at the list db directory command now see it would have given the my sample that we have created and it says the local database directory as d colon right which means that it it means that d colon db2 node 00 my sql003 is the database but now how am i going to say Uh, what is this SQL zero zero one pointing to SQL zero zero two pointing to SQL zero zero three pointing to? Because see, right now we created SQL zero zero three, so we know that it is for the my sample database. What about the rest of the things? Right. So th there is a. So how to find out for existing things? Right. So that is where the importance of this SQL DB DAR comes in. Right. So there is a directory SQL DB DAR. under the node 00 right you find this so this is the local database directory this is called as local database directory please remember this is different from the system database directory so your system database directory is available in the the default is db2 see here is where you find sql db dar you find the same sql db dar sql db back file this is at a system level okay see this is at a system level look at the file path this is at the system level and look at this path db2 node 00 sql db dar this is the local database directory so now here we should say db2 list db directory
on D colon. Now this clearly tells us, right? This clearly tells us tools DB, my sample test. Right? Now look at uh, so tools DB is the one which is pointing to SQL001, right? Which means that if you come to node 00, we'll see SQL001. So this set of database internal files is for tools db and sql002 this set of database internal files is for test right and look at uh, sql003 which we just got created this is for my sample okay uh, so what what is that we are missing we we are having so we checked for tools db which is in d colon my sample which is in d colon test which is in d colon but those which are in we created see in the system database directory it shows your sample is also a database it shows asdb is also a database but it is not shown anywhere else right i mean uh, it's not shown in the list db directory command on d drive right it will not because the local database directory is in e colon here so, in order to get that, we have to say e colon backslash. Now you will get two entries for e colon. Here it will be your sample, here it will be ASDB. Which means, which means we need to go to e colon. There you will find db2 node 0, 0 here we find your sample here we find asdb correct and this is the sql001 that it is talking about asdb is pointing to sql001 and your sample is talking to pointing to sql002 okay this is your sample database okay now another important thing to note is look at the test database here so test database points to sql002 in d drive right see in d drive okay in d drive you have test sql002 let's go there d drive node 00 you have sql002 you don't have a, see you have a asdb you have my sample you have tools db but you don't seem to have uh, test right because still it is it is available under d colon right but still you don't find a directory test here that is because test is a database which is not using the automatic storage functionality what is an automatic storage functionality we will worry about it later okay but as of now let's go back to the presentation so when we create the test right create db test on d uh, d colon automatic storage no so i have given the command that way and i have created the test database that way so let's just create an automatic non automatic storage okay so db2 okay which instance we are in db2 get instance we are in db2 okay so db2 create db my test which is on on d colon only which is the default path we don't want to disturb that we have to say automatic storage no so what happens when we do this we need to go to db2 node 00 Look here, it has created SQL004, a new, uh, that is the new database. Okay. Alright. <coughs> Look at these folders, SQL T00, SQL T001, T002. So, what happens is when you do not use the automatic storage uh, feature, the, the table spaces are created within the same directory right here itself right? sql t00 
so these are all each one is a table actually this is an index file this is a table file right so this is the catalog table space this is another table space this is an another table space that is available right so your database directory which is the the internal files that we are talking about so in the same uh, thing the table spaces are also got created whereas when you use automatic storage the table space is separate and your database directory is separate right and your local database directory is completely different look at here see the sql dbdir is only your local database directory okay which will hold all those database entries which are in this particular path okay so that is the automatic storage we will we can have a broader discussion on that uh, later okay but our focus is to kind of identify uh, to kind of understand what the system database directory is and what's the uh, local database directory is okay okay this create taking some time for creation okay now let's do that in the other instance let's say here my inst my system database directory has my test and your test so my test is pointing to the local database directory file e my db1 your test is pointing to the local database directory file e my db2 so now the path here is completely different right okay it got created so we'll just drop the unnecessary databases db2 drop db my test and db2 list db directory db2 drop db your sample my sample will drop my sample as well okay let's list db directory now it has only three entries so two is in d and another one is in e okay now let's look at here one important thing on e colon okay so it gives me one entry right so because there are three databases now two of them in d colon one of them is in e colon look at the e drive we have asdb which is pointing to sql001 so i go to e colon db2 Note zero zero, ASDBDB. Okay, I have all these table spaces, but where are? But where is my? Uh, okay, one second. SQL zero zero one. So the, here is my database internal files. Okay. Now. Now here, if you look in the my instance, right? we have the path something like local database directory e my db1 right e my db2 right so but we are finding only here e colon d colon so let's try to create one db2 create db my sample so what would i say so on e colon my db1 so this is what is the command right it says the database path does not exist it gives some error right 
where as the file is there e colon my db1 is there right. let's go here e colon my db1 it's there available right but it is not able to create so why that is not able to create it is because this variable this db2 create db on path variable this should be set to s then only then you will be able to specify the file uh, like folder kind of uh, uh, approach otherwise only drive letter is allowed okay like say whenever we say here right create db db name on path this path should only be a drive letter like c colon d colon e colon it cannot be like e colon my db1 as we have right so let's look at the variable here right db2 create db on path equal to s if this parameter is set it will allow you to create e colon my db1 e colon my db2 it will allow you to create databases under that path okay now it is not allowing me why it is not allowing me db2 set hyphen all the variable is not at all set db2 create db2 create db on path that variable is not set and this particular variable is specific to windows only <coughs> this particular variable is specific to windows only okay in unix by default it is supported okay you, you don't need to set some kind of a special uh, variable like this okay it is by default <coughs> supported so now here it is not supported so we'll set the variable db2 set uh, hyphen db2 set or the name is okay okay we have set it so we'll check it whether it has been set correctly right db2 create on db path on yes it is set right now what we can do is db2 create database my sample on my db1 right okay now let's do one thing uh, my db1 is actually having my test and your test right so let's try to create under the same name okay. my test okay so i'm saying db2 create db my test on e my db1 itself the same path okay look i'm giving the same path okay so it is not recognizing which means that we need to restart our server once that environment is set we need to do a db2 stop okay i will use db2 stop force here but you should not be using it in a in a real time uh, systems we should not force stop it should uh, it should gradually stop <coughs> because there are some alive connections i'm just forcing the stop here and then i will say again db2 start okay okay so we have restarted okay now i will give the same command create db on my db1 see now it is going to create right So it's creating right colon my db1 see in e colon my db1 now it has created one folder db2 so inside that you'll be finding again node 00 the sql db dir the sql 001 my test is the my test and there is no naming conflict right see my test is already available right but it is available under a different instance see this instance is this window is for my inst so when you look at this in so that that is the grouping right so the database names should be unique within that instance not across all instances right so by setting that variable we are able to now create the database with the same name on a different folder right uh, uh, like a path kind of now if you look at this path e colon my db1 right this is housing database 
of both instances my INSD also and DB2 also right so now if I issue command here list DB directory it is giving me only my test and your test because I am associating only what is my current instance here DB2 get instance my instance is only my INST it will show only my my INST instances databases the databases which are under that instance now let's do one more thing list DB directory on e colon my DB1 right it will give you it is giving you my test now it is not giving you two my test folders right there are two databases right see my test folder is available in my db1 they are saying here also the same but the difference is from which instance you are working that is the difference right so let's say here db2 list db directory on e my db1 okay this also gives the same my test but these two are actually two different databases right so one is under the folder db2 instance another one is under the folder my inst okay these two are completely different databases so how I will confirm that right okay let's do one thing uh, let's create one more database here okay my test one two okay I'm giving the same path so here I am in DB2 instance I have created two databases okay my test and my test one two right so here if you look my test my test one two two databases right whereas here if you look my inst node zero zero there is only my test right so if I execute list db directory on e my db one this is going to give me the local database directory associated with that instance only which is only one database my test whereas here it is going to give me two databases which is my test and my test one two both so that we can verify once uh, once the creation is done okay. in the meantime we'll uh, look at this command see the main difference see look at here the system database directory tells your local database directory as equal in my db1 and your local database directory as equal in my db2 so if you put here list db directory on e colon you're not going to get anything right because under that uh, e colon there is no database path that is there for the instance my inst it is only in either in my db1 or it is in my db2 right so i have to say e colon my db1 in which case i'll get some output which is having one database in, or in which case my db2 i'll have one more database right which is the your test see my test and your test and under this e my db1 
I have actually under mydb1 I have actually one database which is mytest which is belonging to the myinst instance and I am having look at here now two databases right so when I say here e colon mydb1 let's go to e colon mydb1 I am having actually in total three databases right look at here one is mytest Another one is mytest12, which is under node 0, which is under the DB2 instance, and I'm having mytest is another database which is under my INST instance. Right? So even though in my path E my db1 I have three databases, look at my commands output here. Local database directory on my db1 will give me only two here because which is belonging to the current instance, which is the DB2 instance. And in this window it is Look at local database directory for mydb1. It is only mytest, single database. Look at the folder structure. mydb1, db2 is one instance, my instance is one instance, and these are all the database directories. Okay, so when you really break down things and see in terms of files and folder structure, right? When you really break down into files and folder structures, what you'll find is these are actually it, it just boils down to the path right so d colon d colon is a dft path okay the default database path e colon is again on path right wherein i can have my databases so i can have multiple databases under one instance and even in the same path right they can share the same path like say here e my db1 i can have both instances right databases okay and I will show you one more way of creating the database right uh, DB2 create DB my one two three on okay so here I am going to give e colon uh, let's say like this okay. c colon comma d colon comma db path okay the parameter is db path on okay e colon let's say e colon okay See, when I create a database like this, I am actually segregating all the paths. Okay, so E colon will have only the database related files, C and D will have only the table space related files. I am going to give you a complete segregation. Okay, And uh, in the meantime, another point to note is the SQL DBDAR for a database is specific to uh, like individual databases. So for each and every database created under uh, uh, E colon, you will have this SQL DBDAR. Okay. Similarly, under MyDB1, you will have one SQL DBDAR because that is a database path for you. Okay, that is a database directory for you the system database directory is going to hold these paths only right so when you look at the system database directory right this is the system database directory this is going to tell you okay e my db1 is a path e my db2 is a database path even though here it says local database directory it only says th that the path is that okay so inside that you will have again an instance folder node folder and all those uh, database folders right so let's that's what I have done here trying to segregate everything and show it to you okay so that way the DB path will be separate okay and the table space path will be separate okay Okay. 
So let's just go through in the meantime. Uh, physically, databases are stored as complex folder and file structures, and database folder and file structures are managed by DBM. This is what I mean by the the internal files, right? The the database directory files, the SQL BP file, the recovery history file, the the, the, the internal files, right? So and the logging, the logging directories, those are all the internal things which we should not be manipulating with. And the table space is grouped for automatic storage table space. The table space is this, uh, you know, that it's managed at the database level. Like you saw that, right? The table spaces were all grouped into a separate directory. So that is what is an automatic storage table space. And you can do it manually also. So we will get into the automatic storage database concepts later. Okay. So what it has is every uh, uh, automatic storage database has multiple paths associated with it. It's a single database path and one or more storage paths associated with it managed by the DBM. Okay. And whenever you want to create automatic storage, no, you have to specify explicitly okay, in the creation command. Okay. Now see here. The database has been created. My one, two, three. I have given three things here: C, D, and E. Right? Everything. But now look at the list DB directory. The the system database directory. We we'll look at the system database directory. It is going to tell me where my my one, two, three database is. Right? See here. Here the my one, two, three database is in E colon. Right? Even though I said here. C, D, and E like that. The DB path is the is the important path here. That is E drive. So that is what is going to show here. Okay. Now if I let's go and look at what is there in that. What is there in the C and D drives, right? So C, it would have created DB two, same node zero zero. C it has not created any the SQL zero zero folders or the the database internal working folders that we saw, right? Like uh, what we have in other cases, right here, see the SQL log, the BP file, the DB con file. Nothing will be here in the C DB two node zero zero, my one two three. This is only the table spaces will be there, right? So similarly in D colon DB two node zero zero, you will have my one two three. You will have only the table spaces. T zero zero are all table space directories. Whereas in E drive DB two node zero zero. You will find what was a second. Let's just refresh it. Okay, where is it? E drive my one two three. Node zero zero. Yeah. So SQL zero zero two. Now see this is the key part here, right? See my one two three says here E colon. It, so here what we should do is. List DB directory on E colon. Okay. So here my one two three is pointing to SQL zero zero two. So you will not find here an entry for my one two three as you found in the C drives and D drives, right? C DB two node zero zero had my one two three because this is a table space storage directory alone. This one and similarly D DB two node zero zero my one two three is again a storage directory alone. It is not housing the database files, and in E drive DB two node zero zero SQL zero zero two. This is our uh, database uh, directory. So okay, now how will I prove that? Very good question. So DB two, okay, not even connecting. Let's say DB two get DB CFG for my one two three. So we 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 said there is a DB CFG file, right? Right. So this is the parameters which for the database level parameters, the DB CFG parameters. This exists for each and every database. Now, in order to show this is the one, I am going to rename the DB conf file. Okay, the configuration file, right? So it's going to tell me corrupt. Okay. Now again here I come. SQL con. Again here I come. SQL con. Here I go. Yep, got it. 
right and that's what this command says on e colon right my123 is pointing to sql00 so that is the database directory so just we look at the command which we see create my db123 on c drive read it so c drive and read drive is only used for the storage path that is called the storage path only the table spaces are getting stored there and e drive is where you store the database internal files which is the sql002 which is the actual database directory okay Okay, these are all the screenshots for whatever we have seen till now okay they they just show what are these configuration files and what are these uh, the the database data files and uh, the catalog table space what is this table structure and table space structure and the out the screenshot of all these things okay so i okay. so i hope this would have given a better understanding of how the path is the database path the, what is the local database directory what is the system database directory and what are all the paths associated with the database how they are getting mapped you know in a in a bigger way and uh, you know so so i think it would have helped for the beginners and this is my contact information harish kumar babrao patange i am a member in channel db2.com db2india.in and it.toolbox.com and these are very useful sites where all the db2 uh, enthusiasts uh, uh, you know share their views and they post their questions and and all this and i am going to upload this video you will find this video here also okay and uh, looking forward uh, you know for uh, further uh, uh, tutorial so i am i'm just planning more tutorials like this sort of thing so for any questions you can always reach me in these websites through these websites uh thank you very much thank you all